Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. First video podcast. Fired up for some Q&A. Always wanted to do this. This is going to be fun. Get a chance to go back at some comments on the YouTube. I feel like some of these comments on YouTube, social media, just never go answered. I try to get to as many as I can. I want to take a moment to really dive in, talk about in some detail what exactly is going on, make it a little bit more fun with the engagement, go back and forth. So this should be fun. We'll see how the format goes as we keep going, but having fun with this new studio take. Got the ball out for some props. Got a little Q&A with a, some questions about how to throw a spiral, but all sorts of good stuff. We'll see if I can get into it, see if there's some outtakes, some hot takes, and see what we can make. So welcome to the QB School. All right, first one up, Kiki May, 5'5", five, five, a day ago. Looked like you got some L.A., New York, East Coast, West Coast issues going on with the hat. Can you please explain why his throws are so wobbly? I'm thinking this is about Mitch Trubisky. Either way, that's why the ball's here. Okay, so first things first. I can't explain why some people's throws are so wobbly. I had wobbly throws. Many quarterbacks throw it with a little wobble. One of the best to ever do it, in my opinion, Peyton Manning. Used to throw with a wobble. Used to used to say that it looked like some of his uh, throws, the guys were catching TVs. They just come in right on you. It looks like you're catching like a medicine ball. But again, it really doesn't matter if you get it out on time with accuracy. Sure, a spiral looks great. I always remember growing up, Warren Moon, just the tightest spiral in the world. Beautiful spin. Rodgers nowadays, the guy gets all sorts of velocity. So does Brady. All sorts of revolutions on the ball. But again, throwing is different for everybody. There's not one way to do it. Anybody who tells you that there is one way to do it is not telling you the truth. Uh, I personally think, talk a little bit about the mechanics of throwing the ball. So an NFL ball is probably, I think it's a little bit wider than most college or high school balls. I'm not sure about the length of it. But either way, you got to have some pretty big hands just to get an opportunity to do this. The next thing is, is the control of the ball as far as where your hands go. There is no secret sauce here as far as like, some people hold it in the back. Some people put their finger on the tip. Some people get two laces. I personally get just about two laces. Now, the secret to this, and I think where a lot of people go wrong when they're throwing in the tailgate or throwing around in their front or backyard with their kids, is you really want to hold it with your fingers. And so, first of all, you have to have a hand big enough to do it. I've got young kids, and everybody wants to cup it because they feel like they can get more push on it, more velocity with it. But you really want to throw with your fingers. So there should be just a little bit of space. See if I can get in there and see it. Usually you can see my eyeball when I do this at camps and stuff. You want that space. There it is right there. You want that space between your hand and the palm. And I remember when I was growing up when in college or high school, I would sit there and just throw balls up. Just throw balls up like this the whole time because I wanted as much touch as possible. And even now, teaching touch is the best way to do it in my opinion. So just that element of how it spins off your hand. So that's how you hold it. First of all, there's no way to hold it. Again, you can hold it anywhere that you're comfortable with it. I think the more you're towards the center of the ball, the more accuracy control you have on the ball, the more you're back towards the back. It's probably a little bit easier to get spins, revolutions on it, make it a pretty spiral, but can't necessarily control where it goes, especially on touch throws where you're trying to get it up and down, as opposed to if you're holding the back, it feels like it just kind of, sets like that the whole way you want those touch throws to go up and then the nose to come down and that comes from a little bit more towards the center of the ball then again you're throwing with your fingers you want that nice little space right there when you throw it and then when you actually spin it it's a little counterintuitive it's kind of like throwing a, a screwball for baseball you really want your thumb to end up down at your crotch so it's you're throwing and the last thing to touch the ball is this index finger right there and really i've played played with a hurt index finger before and you really don't even need it you can have it in a splint that's how little the index finger touches the ball it's just the very last thing that kind of gives it that perfect revolution so again throw it with your fingers you spin it it's counterintuitive you want that thumb coming down to your cross so when you go to spin it it's this is the action of the wrist so it's kind of a bizarre really firm wrist and then snap down with that thumb down to your crotch i remember going to my first couple camps when I was in high school and everyone was saying thumb to crotch, thumb to crotch. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never heard this before. All I do is play catch with my dad. And it was all of a sudden it made a lot of sense. All of a sudden it started feeling a little bit better, but that's how you get the revolutions. But I want to reiterate the fact that I'm telling you, it is not that important. 
what it comes out looking like. Yes, it looks prettier. Yes, it looks great on NFL films when they slow-mo it and it's a perfect spiral. But again, I'm telling you, some of the best that I've ever done it, I've thrown with a little bit of wobble. I used to have a coach in college, Mike Morosky, who played in the league as a backup for, I think, eight years, bounced around Atlanta and the 49ers. He used to joke all the time, anytime I'd throw a ball that wasn't a perfect spiral or look great, he'd say, a little wobble makes it easier to catch. I say the same thing nowadays. Just a little wobble, no big deal, get over it. I think young quarterbacks are really always kind of, oh, the ball didn't look pretty, it didn't look good. Nobody cares. Accuracy, timing, velocity, tempo, all those things matter way more than the perfect spin on the ball. So just my hot take on it. All right, next up. Let's see what we got. On to the next. Oh, this is a good one. I'm excited. Sean A. It would be cool, Kool-Aid, if you had like one of those tablets or something where you write on the screen and it shows on the footage like they do on TV when showing replays by broadcasters. Yeah, bro, that would be cool. I've never watched this channel before. So I decided to write a comment before I watch all the other videos on the entire channel. So I would think that that would be a cool idea. Thanks so much for your comment. I'm going to get right. Love it. I'm telling you, we're going to have fun with these comments. Luke G. Luke G's field review. Luke G and I are actually thinking about trying to get a, a combination, work together, a little collaboration video here or a podcast here pretty soon. So I know he's a diehard Lions fan. You just found out that I actually played for the Lions, so that was probably fun for <laughs> fun for me at least. Luke G's field review. I'm happy you at 10K, but we have to get you to 100K. 10K is not acceptable. LOL. Keep up the amazing work. I appreciate it, Luke. Looking forward to working together with you. Lions fans are diehards. I had a blast in that division. Fun living in Detroit, out in uh, Dearborn, hanging out. It was uh, not the most amount of wins ever, but it was fun. Good people. Really kind of resurge my career personally so it's fun to it's fun to connect with those fans excited to talk about stafford where the organization's headed soon so look forward to working together all right next david watson wow the qb school must be fan a fantastic qb he made every call correctly sitting on his chair 24 hours after the game i would want him on my team oh david watson sarcasm on youtube bro you found your home i love it Thank you so much for this hot take. Yes, you have to wait for the games to be over to make YouTube videos. Yes, I know I try my hardest to get the calls correctly 24 hours sitting in my really nice comfortable chair in my new studio. But bro, I don't know what else we can do. I'm not going to YouTube live this stuff. Trust me, I wasn't the perfect quarterback by any means, but the hot take is, uh, is probably not that hot. So I appreciate the fizzle. All right. Thanks for watching, bro. Love this. Get a chance to respond to these. Shake Tube. I like that name. That was absolutely amazing content. I feel like Mitch has terrible footwork and no pocket presence. He never slides or steps up or both. For such a great athlete, he is a borderline statue. Can you speak on these issues? You know I can, Shake Tube. All right, first things first. He definitely does not have terrible footwork. The guy is a starting NFL quarterback taking number two overall. Okay, he, I think he's a second year guy, no pocket presence. I feel like this is a overreaction to a super small sample size. Yes, y'all saw him play last year. Yes, the offense is a unique offense in my opinion because Nagy likes to trick him up, smoke him, smoke and mirrors, kind of overcomplicate things with formations to kind of scheme trick people open. And it worked last year. And there's no reason why it can't work this year to a certain extent. Now the book is out though. I think for Trubisky himself, I think the book is if you take away his first receiver or the first look or where they're trying to manufacture the completion, he's going to struggle to process quickly from the pocket. And I think that translates into the things that you pointed out about footwork and presence kind of coming to the surface more than they probably would. Once he gets more comfortable, basically being able to say no to number one, yes to two or three, I think those things will start to clean themselves up and it won't definitely not terrible. I think it will just get faster from the pocket and really to me playing quarterback is so much more about just processing information pre-snap i think a lot of people think you take a step you take a drop you say no to number one no to number two yes to number three really you might have two you might have three four options on every play and determining what you see your vision what the shell is are there two safeties is there one safety where are the corners are they off are they bump 
What does that tell me about what I need to do with my read? All of those things matter more than very few plays are pure progression where you go, yes, number one, no, number two, no, number three, or no, number one, yes, number two, throw it. Those things are, it's it's not as clean as that. Why you watch guys like Brady and Breeze operate so quickly from the pocket is because all these things are pre-snap reads. Pre-snap, what's the shell? Okay, this is where I'm supposed to go. Post-snap, it's confirmation. Okay, yes, I have it. No, I don't. No, I don't. What's the next read? And it's boom, boom, boom. That fast. It's not, I think as guys start coming in, especially from the college and the evolution of the RPO spread offense, the things are just a little bit more complicated at the league, especially once people get a book on you. And what I mean by a book on you is once there's film and they can start to see what they want to do to make you uncomfortable from the pocket as a quarterback, it's really complicated. And another reason why I'm really excited to see how the league adjusts to Patrick Mahomes. I think he's a dynamic, terrific, most exciting player to watch in the league. But every defense coordinator has had their chance to kind of dive in and do a deep dive, especially that I'm really excited to watch the divisional opponents because they got to have a plan, something to impact what he does and make him more uncomfortable than he already is. And the guy's a freak thrower, just natural spinner. But those type of things, I think once Trubisky gets just a little bit more polished as far as Nagy gets a little bit better sense of what he can do from the pocket and being able to create more options as far as not, we're not going to trick him up with formations just to get one option. It's this, and if this isn't there, you go to this immediately. And so that's the kind of quick decision-making that I think will make all those other things kind of better in his game. So hope that makes sense. He is a great athlete. I love when he gets up the field. I just think he needs a little bit more football IQ about you can't do it on third and 10. You can, it's a lot easier to run for a first down on third and four or five, six or fourth and five than it is to run from fourth and eight or fourth and 10. It's hard to get 10, year, 10 yards in the league, especially when those guys know that that's your, your MO. You're going to run if it's blurry, if it's cloudy, all of a sudden you're not getting a number three, you're taking off, which is fine in those mid range, short range distances for a first down, but it's a lot harder in the longer range. And so that's why those guys make big money. You gotta be able to convert third and 10, fourth and the long, those type of things. So appreciate the question. That's a good one. Let's see on to the next. Okay. Michael Connors, what happened to Aaron Rodgers? Question mark. He was 18 of 30 for 203 yards, three rushing attempts for eight yards. And he was sacked five times for a loss of 37 yards with one TV one TD, and no fumbles or interceptions. If Tom Brady plays like this on Sunday, we'll see him, We'll see an onslaught of Brady fell off the cliff last night. Hot takes on Monday. Michael, I don't think so. Yeah, 18 for 30, 200 yards, not uh, a great night by any standards. But again, he won. Divisional opponent on the road against a really good defense with a brand new head coach calling plays for him, that new relationship. He's in a new offense. But the thing about it is, what I did the video on Aaron yesterday was he strung together big plays, four big plays, boom, 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 where Trubisky didn't. And so the, those these games come down, any football game comes down to four or five plays. You hear that at every level. Any coach has ever said that. It comes down to four or five plays. And Aaron made those plays. Trubisky didn't. The Packers did. The Bears didn't. That's why you don't hear it. And I don't. I think your your take on Tom Brady is not true at all. I think Tom, I think the Patriots are going to, do what the Patriots do. Be really smart about Brady. Find ways to take advantage of what he does really well. Process the ball. Spin it when he needs to spin it. But they're also going to run the ball. Get in all sorts of big personnel groups. Protect Brady. He's not going out there to try to set the record for most passing yards. That's not what he's about. They're about winning championships. So, yeah. Is there different standards for Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers? Sure. But to feel like Mitch Trubisky is getting too much heat because, he, you know, yeah, he lost. That's what happens. Quarterbacks get too much attention when you win and too much attention when you lose. That's part of the position. But, yeah, was Aaron perfect? No, by any means. Did they have all sorts of pass protection issues? Yeah. Are the Bears' defense pretty good? Yeah. Like, all those things. It's the NFL, bro. Like, there are guys who get paid on both sides of the ball. You're talking about Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, two of the best to ever do it. So, yeah, they're going to have great games, Hall of Fame games every year, every game. No. But to go into Soldier and win first game of the season, new head coach, struggling pass protection wise, you know, I think it was pretty, pretty impressive performance on Thursday night football. So as far as Tom Brady, the guy's not falling off a cliff. He's just not, he's going to exit when he wants to exit and uh, it's going to be fun. And I think we should just continue to do the thing that I try to do when I watch him and just enjoy what the Patriots do. They're on a different level as far as organizational structure, scheme, offensively, defensively. They're so deep across the board. It's just a, it's a pleasure to watch. I know a lot of people are haters out there. 
And uh, I think that they're, they've given us ammunition for that. But I appreciate the level of football, consistency, and just improvement that they bring every single week. Even hearing them talk at the podium, it's always about we got to get better. We got a lot of improvement, you know, and it becomes this monotone like messaging, but that's how Bill creates in that organization, that building, how he wants them talking because that's what they believe. And they've been able to do it decade after decade now. It's crazy. So appreciate the comment. Thanks, Michael. Even though we disagree. All right, Chris Smith. I know a few Chris Smiths. Hopefully this isn't one of them. Nick Mullins is just as good. Niners overpaid for that guy. Talking about Garoppolo. And it wasn't like he was the last missing piece. Given the rest of the roster, and if the coach wasn't who, he, who it is, you develop Mullins along with the rest of the team. Also, Garoppolo is really a basic QB. Watch all of his plays going back to 2017. He basically sits in between the hash mark, bounces up and down, stare downs, and medium velocity, mid-range passes. Watch his pocket presence versus Mullins. I wish they would have passed on the 27 million QB club. Bro, you are incorrect. <laughs> I'm comfortable saying this from a long time backup quarterback. There's nothing that similar between Garoppolo and Nick Mullins, in my opinion. Garoppolo does many things. You know, I, I understand why he takes heat about, you know, staying healthy, you know, on maybe some underwhelming preseason performances, but he is a very, very good NFL quarterback. And to think that he's in the same category as Nick Mullins is just not, is simply irresponsible for me as someone who loves the quarterback position to think that it's the same thing. And so to think that they overpaid for him, maybe they overpaid for him, but that's the market value. Like that's just the reality. I get all of us don't make that kind of money, but that's the marketplace dictating what those quarterbacks are making. The next thing about being the last missing piece of the roster, I don't know, man, I'm not a 49er roster take. I don't, I don't pay that much attention to what their movement looks like, but to think that if they just develop Mullins along with the rest of the roster, that they would be fine in that division, I think is, is, is not correct and not anywhere near accurate. You need a quarterback who plays at a really high level consistently to be good in the NFL. That's just the reality. And Nick Mullins, in my opinion, is not a franchise guy at the moment. Garoppolo has the potential to jump right in and be that guy. And so I don't think there's any 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 comp, any com, contrast between the two. And then to say he basically sits in between the hash mark, bounces up and down, stare downs, and medium velocity mid-range passes. Yeah, that's most quarterbacks, bro. That's what they do. They stay between the hashes. They bounce up and down. Hopefully they stay consistent, low level. Shoulders don't bounce all over the place. Eye level's the same so they can be consistent throwing, which I think Garoppolo does a really good job at. And I think this is a, a, a total miss on this comment. But medium velocity, yeah, man, most people don't throw cannonballs out there. Mid-range passes, yeah, most passes are mid-range. They're either short underneath or mid-range. Very few deep balls all the time. It's not recess. Watch his pocket presence versus Mullins. I mean, I don't think that there's any huge difference one way or the other. They both have good pocket presence. They're both professional quarterbacks. To say that I'm going to go back and watch all of his plays from 2017, no. I have no interest in doing that. There's, you know, I get it that people are upset about the cash, but Jimmy Garoppolo is a really good player. It's going to be fun to see where the 49ers go. I think people might be kind of overhyping them a little bit, but I hope they exceed expectations. I have a, I'm a big fan of what the 49ers got going on right now, and it's going to be fun to watch Garoppolo and see if he can play at a high level throughout a whole season. I think that's what everybody wants to see. Not just a whole season, but then make it into a great career and kind of match what his kind of expectations and hype have been around the league. So that's a wrap on QB School video podcast. So I'm excited. First week in studio. Hopefully you all learned something. Learn a little bit about throwing the ball. Got some hot takes, some sarcasm on YouTube. Had some fun with it. Let me know what you think. You got other questions, comments. You know I'm going to get back to you now. So make them funny. Make them good. Make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support of this channel. Just want to keep it growing. Get on an upward trajectory and keep it going. So thank you so much. Have a good one.